Hello, this is uh, Dr. Tag, and I am going to explain a little bit more about the swap program so that uh, you have a better understanding of the C code uh, because without understanding the C code, um, it's very difficult to implement the assembly code correctly. So let's go ahead and take a look at the C code here, which is already displayed here. Um, but it's better to look at it um, when we can refer to line numbers like this. <clears throat> the program starts execution in main. It has two local variables, x and y, and basically main as a function is already implemented uh, in the code that I provided. x gets a value of 3, y gets a value of 7, and that should help answer some of the questions in the quiz itself because uh, you can clearly see uh, which location is getting a 7 and which location is getting a 3 so that can help answer some of the questions of you know, which location is X and which location is Y. And then we call swap but the way we call swap is not passing X and Y along as the arguments but it's passing the address of X and the address of Y as the arguments. And then uh, there's a return zero, which we don't really care about because you know that's by that time you know the code has nowhere to return to, or to use the return value. So that's not the main concern to us. So what is more important is swap because main is already done. You know your job is to implement the swap function. So the swap function has a local variable t. It has two parameters. One is ptr1.1, and one is ptr2.2. On the first line here, uh, t is getting the value in the memory location that pointer 1 is pointing to. So you have to kind of go through the sequence of you know, how do I get to the location that is pointed to by PTR1 when all you have to start with is basically the offset of where I can find PTR1 from where the stack 1 points to. <clears throat> and once you figure that out, you know, uh, the second one is uh, fairly easy. The only change is you know, the left-hand side is also referring to something that PTR1 is pointing to when the right-hand side is referring to something that PTR2 is pointing to. So basically, once you figure out line 4, the rest you know, would be you know, fairly easy to do. Now, this is something that we have kind of talked about when I described the post increment uh, function in one of the classes. So you might want to refer to that one and kind of go through the explanation of you know, how do we refer to a memory location that is pointed to by a uh, parameter, which is of pointer type. <coughs> so that's the best clue that I have. Uh, for you is to kind of review that particular lecture. Um, it is recorded and hopefully you also you know add some comments into that program you know after the class. All right so with this out of the way <coughs> oh let me run the program too okay so let me get out of the editor and then just do a gcc dash g dash oops dash g dash o swap swap Let's see, <coughs> and I didn't like it, okay, so that means I forgot to do a pound include stdint.h, there we go, save, and then go ahead and run it again, okay, gcc, there we go, and a gdb swap, alright, so <coughs> the most important part is in swap, so I'm going to put a breakpoint you know, directly in swap on line 6 and then we run the program. So by the time we stop, it's already in swap and one thing you know, we want to do is to figure out okay, what exactly is pointer 1, what is pointer 2 in the context of main. So we don't have to print uh, pointer 1 and pointer 2, they are already displayed in the debugger because we are currently at a breakpoint at the entry point of a function. So GDB is kind of neat in this way because it automatically shows the parameters. So the key is to remember these two locations. <coughs> and then we use the BT or the backtrace method to look at, okay, how did we get here? We got here from main. 
So you use the frame method to switch back to frame one, which is the caller of the function that the breakpoint is at right now. So when, once we switch back to frame one, now we can refer to uh, X and Y. Now you can always print X, which is not very useful. Um, well, kind of useful because you know, we can see how, you know, this is a three here, which means, you know, <coughs> this is likely to be the address of local variable X of main. So we ask, is that really the case? And the answer is, yep, that really is the case. So that means, you know, the address of Y is probably parameter PTR2. So we take a look at this We go like, hmm, okay, this is a 1E and this is a 1E as well. So now we are fairly sure that um, when we get into swap, pointer one is the address of local variable X and pointer two is the address of variable Y and both are local variables of main. So at this point, we can go back to frame zero, which is you know, the current context where the uh, execution has stopped or paused. So now we want to look at you know, what is, <coughs> we want to look at three things, okay? The first one is you know, where is PTR1? Uh, PTR1, there we go. And then we look at what is PTR, and whoops, pointer one, sorry. And then when we look at what is at PTR1. So these are the three concepts that you have to differentiate. And in assembly language programming, you cannot even get to the address of pointer one until you get to the offset of P pointer one from where the stack pointer points to. So there are a few ways to get to it. You know, you can just kind of go move the uh, one of the registers, you know, typically I use register C for this purpose, and you can move that register you know, up and down to get to the right thing that you want to access, or you can use the general method that we have already talked about in class, which is defining you know, symbolic labels, and then just refer to um, the very systematic and structured method to access a particular thing on the stack from a function. All right, so this is important because you know, now we know whatever PTR1 is pointing to has a value of three. So that means you know, by the time we execute this entire statement, T is going to become three. So we single step and we double check what is in T, it is in fact you know, a three. So after this, <coughs> um, you can then take a look at, okay, what is pointer two pointing to? It is a seven. And that means you know, this seven is going to be, which is the right-hand side of this assignment, is going to change whatever the left-hand side, which is whatever point of one is pointing to. So remember, point of one is the address of local variable X of main. So that means this assignment statement will change the value of local variable X of main to a seven. All right, so we single step and we Go back to main first, okay? So we use your know, frame one to go back to, to main. And then we want to verify that because we want to verify that X is already changed to a seven because of uh, that one line in, <coughs> uh, in swap. Uh, the line number is seven to be more specific. So now we get that verification. So this is really important because you know, your assembly code needs to have the same effect um, as the C code. So now we get to line eight and pointer two is pointing to Y. We know what is in T, we know T has three. So that means um, local variable Y should change to a three after this statement executes in swap. So we execute the statement first, single step. <coughs> and then once again, we use frame to go back to main. And then we ask what is in Y at this point and it is now a three. So this is this part, this kind of verification is very important because we are not swapping the parameters. We're swapping what the parameters are pointing to. So now we can go back to frame zero. There's not much else to do, okay? Because we are at the end. You can see that there's just a close brace here on line nine. So single step, we now go back to main. So by the time we go back to main, you know, X has uh, what was the value of y and then y has what was the value of x and that should be the effect of the swap excuse me uh, function 
So the trace here is, I mean, uh, tracing through GDB. Uh, that's the end of that trace. <clears throat> so I hope this helps you to understand the uh, C code a little bit better. Um, and once again, you know, there's one lecture where I use the function called um, post increment or just increment. I think the name of the program is just increment. That program and that particular lecture should give you um, all the things that you need to get this particular program to work. So um, that's kind of the key. This is actually how, um, you know, how I would imagine, you know, the people would study for this class is, you know, basically relating your homework assignment to uh, lecture material and then relating that in return to the concepts that we should understand by now, uh, both because you know, CISP 360 is a prerequisite of this class, and this is making use of the concept of address of, uh, the reference, what a pointer is, um, and then on top of that, you know, we also you know, use instructions you know, supported by the TTP to do the, uh, the necessary dereferencing. And as another clue, okay, you know, which most of you already know already, is there are only two, um, there are only two instructions that are capable of dereferencing. One is load LD, and one is store, which is ST. So I would um, defer to you to look at the opcode table to find out which one is going to overwrite a memory location, and which one is only going to read from a memory location. All right, so that's the end of this recording. There will be another one on the homework assignment that is due on Thursday.